you can start anytime you are ready. Yes, good morning, everyone. Thumbs up po if you can see the screen, the PowerPoint screen. Okay. Good morning. Um, I was request actually have volunteered po to conduct this lecture for our practitioners because this is very timely with the changes po with the ECQ guidelines uh, as NCR is entering GCQ and others are in modified GCQ. A lot of the clinics and other workplaces are about to open. So it's very important that you know the minimum public health standards because this is our best defense against the coronavirus be the disease being new but viral in nature po. Yeah, po. Actually, this is just an overview. This is something that we show to the LGU so that at least they understand how they classify the provinces. I short lang po ito because this is not really for just so you will understand when you talk about places that have cases less than 25 or independent component cities with less than 10 highly urbanized cities with less than 15 what they use is the critical utilization rate this pertains to how much uh, the hospitals or health facility is capable of accepting or catering to cases so they factor in the number of isolation beds, how full is the isolation ward, if you have back vents available. They don't consider case doubling time. Case doubling time po is the number of days it takes for the number of cases to double in number. Since these are a bit um, small or not that significant, they don't use case doubling time because it will be interpreted as being too high or too fast. So when your critical care is util the utilization rate is below 30%, ito po yung nasa low risk. Those are qualified under low risk and those with 30 to 70% are in medium risk. And those who, that have more than 70% utilization, sabihin po, more than 70% na po occupied ang kanilang isolation wards, ang kanilang mga make vents, at ang kanilang mga isolation beds. Yan, sila po yung mga nasa high risk. And when you talk about places with cases of more than 25, they factor in the case doubling time. So, andito rin po sa table, you see if it's less than 7 days, high risk, with less than 30%. Ayan, tapat-tapat lang po yung. So next one you see here, this is from the, this is the outbreak slide. Ito po yung graph showing the increase in the number of cases. So, you know, again, if we have zero cases or localized transmission, but with the few cases, they're classified sa zero po as low risk. Starting under initiation, ito na po yung nasa medium. Those with an accelerated phase, ito po yung mga high risk, ito po yung napunta noon sa ECQ and MECQ. Yan po. And then, how do we ultimately decide? Actually, not us, but the regional IATF. They don't just factor in what I've discussed or mentioned, yung pong health. They also look into other health system capacity, yung pong contact tracing, and then they also look at security, social, and economic. I think this is what happened with NCR. Even if health-wise, you still have a high number of cases, the needs for social and economic was much higher. Meron po sila ditong scoring system. And then they factor in everything. And then that is how they decide what level to grant or what level to classify the province or region. So here you will see yung pong types of quarantine. This is not updated but This was a two, around two weeks ago. So makita niyo po, even under GCQ, this is very important. Under GCQ, it is still under moderate risk. 
and you only go, you are classified as low risk if you have no quarantine at all. You're not implementing any quarantine or you're under modified GCQ. But still, please know that even if there is no quarantine, you still have to implement minimum health standards. So ito po. Um, ito yung sinasabi ko po kanina, what is the risk severity, low, moderate, this is where we are, and then high. And then what will you do? And then once you know what you need to do to pay ating minimum public health standards, of course, budget is always an issue. So now we will need to know how will we prioritize or choose which intervention we will implement first. So here you will see the different risk levels. And don't worry, I will give you the copy of the issue one so that you can go into each and every detail for whatever is applicable in your area or your clinics. So you will see even if there is no quarantine at all, there are some standards that we really have to implement like yung pong cough etiquette, promoting mental health. Here you will see that Kaya po meron pa rin tayong curfew because even under half of the low risk and under GCQ, must do pa rin po. You still have to do yung pong um, protecting the high risk population which are the elderly or those with underlying health conditions. That is why they are still not allowed to go out or go to the malls or go to other places. And then that is why also we are still providing some support to those who are working hand washing across all levels this must do disinfection wearing masks again across all levels even without public health standards maybe not at a hundred percent but it's it's still recommended ito pong physical distancing again even without because now we've noticed that with the entry into m gcq and general quarantine a lot of people are getting lax in implementing or they are getting um uh, a bit used to some of the places or they feel that, that it's no longer needed but you will see here that it should still be implemented for then limiting non-essential travel, again, that is why for high-risk populations, they are still not allowed or they are discouraged from leaving their homes unless it is essential travel. Here you can see for limiting non-essential services under modified GCQ, ano na po siya, can do, which is why in some places they allow yung pong around 50% or some form of public transportation. I think with NCR, they're going to allow mga TNVS. This, again, also very important. Under modified GCQ, maximum of 10 at a time. Because some people feel that because they've gone into the modified general community quarantine, then they can go back to the way things were. We have to uh, make them understand that we are not done with the pandemic yet. So even with GCQ, so GCQ po, it's still not allowed. Under modified, it's a, excuse me po, it's a maximum of 10. And then when there is no quarantine at all, the recommendation is maximum of 50. This is what we talk about. This is what, what we mean with new normal. Just because we're going to enter the phase where we don't have quarantine or a low uh, level of quarantine, it doesn't mean that we will go back to how things were before we had the virus. Yeah. And then alternative learning. Excuse me. Yes. And then this is what we mean when we talk about um, modification potential per setting. Contact intensity po is how long do you interact with the person? So when you're in the grocery, medium because you don't really stay there for long. And then mga chigur po, 10, 15 minutes. I mean, interacting with other people, not staying at the place. And then number of contacts, it can be limited, medium. That is why ito pong modification potential, when it's listed as low, Ang priorities po dyan ay mga 
PPEs, meaning wearing of masks po yan or yung mga face shields depending on the setting. When it's medium, ibig sabihin po nito, you implement administrative controls. When it's administrative controls, this uh, pertains to policies. So may kita nyo po, groceries, yan, medium policies. Kapag po high, kailangan nyo na maglagay ng engineering controls, meaning meron na po kayong kailangan ipagawa. They're talking about barriers. Kaya pansinin nyo po, when you look at our groceries, even yung mga cashiers, nasabi nga po namin, eventually, when you have extra funds, then of course, you can erect the barriers, yung pong kanilang mga DIY. But the first priority, medium po yan, administrative policies, kailangan unahin po yung you have to regulate the number of people coming in, you have to regulate the number of hours they stay there, you have to ensure that you're providing alcohol, yung po yung uunahin. So, ito yung sinasabi namin na um, modification potential per setting and how this table can help you prioritize which are the ones you need to implement first. Here. So, you see office and workplaces, yung pong clinics natin might fall into this category. Contact intensity is high. Kasi po, um, you deal with patients, especially po yan, acupuncture, di ba? It really takes a long time because aside from the history taking and the physical exam, the procedure itself takes quite a while. And then number of contacts, medium, because you can always limit how many patients will come in your clinics. Modification potential high, meaning you have to implement Engineering controls. Ito po yung kailangan may barrier kayo doon po sa inyong reception centers. You have to place markings at the floors kung saan po tatayo yung mga pasyente. Uh, mamaya po, isa-isahin naman po natin yung buses. Okay. Going to DOH strategies, we have, this is based on the guidelines on risk-based public health standards. Again, I will also provide you with a copy of the issue one so you can look at it in detail. I just did a simplified version in the presentation because it's a very long table. Kapag po binabasa lang namin yung issue ones, eh medyo nakakatulog po kami kasi table form po siya. So we have five point sectoral strategies, increasing resilience, we want to reduce the transmission or spread of the disease, we want to decrease the contact rate, and we want to shorten the duration of infectiousness. And then the implementation po, it's preventing, detect, and isolate, treat. So sa clinics po ninyo, we concentrate on preventing. Malaki po ang role na integrative medicine, especially in increasing resilience. And then you have to implement the standards for stopping the transmission, reducing the rate. And then also you have to have coordination policies in place for detecting and isolating. Ito po. Uh, I did it, uh, I split it into two workplaces for those who have, um, I mean, not really larger, but those who have practices involving um, employees or assistants, then it's considered as a workplace. And then later on, we will concentrate on the outpatient clinics. It's very similar. So in increasing resilience, we're talking about improving health. And we talk about health. It's not just the physical, but of course, it includes uh, yung ating mental. That's why exercise, healthy diet, we're including prayer and meditation and this is where um, we, we have an advantage for us integrative medicine practitioners because there are a lot of um, knowledge or practices that we can share with our patients so that they can improve their level of health and aside from that meron din po tayong modalities na makakatulong sa kanila for promoting mental health is you have there are available hotline spot. Um, DOH has one, National Center for Mental Health. You just need to get a copy of the hotlines and then um, place it in a conspicuous area or at least know so that when some of your employees 
say that they need a support group po or some form of counseling, then you can refer them. Or alam ko po sa inyo, as practitioners, marami rin din po dyan sa atin ang meron po silang experience in counseling or other forms of modalities that can help in terms po of uh, promoting mental health like yung pong ating mga uh, so yoga, meditation, so that's included here. And then you also need to do proper scheduling if you have staff because you have to promote uh, proper work-life balance. Nakita niyo po kanina across all levels, you have to promote cough etiquette. That's why they should not cough or sneeze openly nor use just their hands. So they have to cough yan po, inside the elbow, use a tissue, or wear a mask. That's why sa minimum public health standards, ito po, you have to provide tissues within the establishments, especially for common areas. So sa lobby po, sa reception area. And then for general public, cloth mask is fine. But for symptomatic cases or for your staff, they have to, depending on the setting, they have to wear a surgical mask. You want to reduce the exposure of our vulnerable population, meaning those with underlying conditions, those who are elderly, those who are pregnant. That's why if you have staff who fall under the, this category, you have to provide alternate work arrangements for them. And in your clinic, you have to set up special lanes for these people. Po. And then providing support to your workforce in case they need transportation or any other form of support, then they say that um, it will be a big help if you can provide it to them. And medical grade PPE to staff, depending on the setting. Then we, ito po, this is not just DOH, but we're also working with other agencies to provide the benefits and of course we welcome um, non-government agencies and other private groups to help us in assisting our general population or the community group. Next po is reducing transmission. So this is about personal hygiene. So in your places you have to have hand washing stations or hand sanitizers. You need to place dispensers with alcohol in the entrances, exits, common spaces, and amenities. And it's one thing you have to consider is the long-term implication of this because it's not just one time. For policies, well, you have to monitor and ensure that it's not enough that you have the containers there. There has to be availability of continuous supplies for the soap or the alcohol. Environmental hygiene, regular disinfection of rooms, and frequently touched surfaces. Let on a high vas light po, detailing disinfection and cleaning. So ito po, this is for surfaces and commonly touched areas. You need a foot bath in all entrances. Our recommendation po is yung pung mat is soaked in one is to ten bleach solution. And again, you have to ensure that the supplies are readily available so you can do this regularly. Use uh, For those, I think some practitioners, po, they also offer uh, food or they deal with food preparation. I think yung mga natural pas ata, but pa naman po ito. So yeah, proper food preparation and handling. And then use of PPE and medical grade apparel. Later on, I'll show you the table regarding the optimal use of PPE because this is dependent on the setting. Hindi naman po lahat kailangan naka full PPE. So depending on the setting, so they have recommendations. And then those who are healthy or asymptomatic may wear the regular cloth masks. But those who will be dealing with patients, they have to wear medical grade equipment. Another one po is reducing contact. So always you have to practice physical distance. You have to place temporary barriers in the front desk. There should always be physical distancing. That's why we say you have to place the markers, the floors. You have to limit the number of guests in public places. And then again, cloth mask for public, surgical mask for asymptomatic. Modified work structures for your, if you have employees who belong to the high risk population, you have to give them alternative structures or arrangements 
in case um, they need it. And of course, yung pong kanina, di ba sabi ko po, it's either 10 or 50, depending on the level of quarantine. So you have to restrict the number of people coming in. Then reducing the duration of infection. We have to immediately isolate anyone who's a suspect case, probable or confirmed case. Aside from that, we also have to immediately isolate those who are showing symptoms. Kaya po, importante na... You should do temperature checks or screening for guests and also for your employees. But as soon as they show any symptom like yung pong fever, cough, cold, or sore throat, then they should not report to work anymore and they should be isolated. Now we go to outpatient clinics in general. First, Slide again, increasing resilience. It's very similar po. It's almost the same. To lang po is another form of alternative arrangement is to have specific visiting hours or if you can do it online. Kasi po, di ba dati, it was our practice that they can come in and then they just stay at the waiting areas. Now, because of the possibility of gathering in a place, we don't recommend that. So it's if you can devise a way that you can do your appointments either through text calls or online, then that is very much recommended. And again, you have to set up special lanes for those with high-risk conditions. Here, it's a simple. You have to provide the supplies for personal hygiene and then the availability of uh, supplies and materials for disinfection of rooms and areas, and then the use of PPE, especially for healthcare workers. Uh, one thing I want to um, emphasize for regarding reducing the duration of infection, because some um, clinics don't realize that as early as now, you have to have coordination with the nearest, um, either private facility or government facility. Bakit po? Because when you detect someone who are showing symptoms, then you have to refer them or isolate them. Kailangan po hindi na po sila sumama sa general na public para po makapagalat. I know there are some practitioners who are treating mildly symptomatic or confirmed cases. If that is a case lang po, make sure na yung po, yung sa area nila, napapractice po yung quarantine, and then you're protecting yourself and the patients. You have to wear full gear. And of course, do not forget that, of course, uh, there are you are not prohibited from treating them, but have a referral system with either a government hospital or private hospital because they have to be monitored. And we have to ensure that they are, they are practicing home quarantine or isolation po because we don't want a further spread of the infection. Ito po are some of the details on cleaning and disinfection. I will give you a copy of the slide. So ito po yung ating 1 is to 10. So you have ordinary bleach 100 ml. You mix it with 900 ml of water or if you have chlorine powder or granules, ito po, one teaspoon and then two liters of water. You use this solution. This is a stronger solution, which you use for cleaning the toilets, po, floors, vehicles, or surfaces, especially those um, surfaces that, invo that involve treating or screening of patients. And then soil clothes din po and your laundry para po sa inyong mga beds or yung pong sa mga pillowcases, your gowns, if they're reusable, you have to soak them in bleach solution for 15 minutes before you wash them using the usual detergent and water. There is a milder solution, one is to 100 solution or 70% ethyl alcohol. We use this po for commonly touched surfaces like all the switches, doorknobs, handles, desks, your phones, non-critical items if you use thermometers, BP cuffs, or some of, um, alam ko po sa inyo, so you use some of the probes for diagnosis, then you can use the milder solution. At least once a day, they recommend that you do this more often if you're seeing patients 
Yan po. And then, ito po yung sabi ko kanina, used linen, they have to be placed in separate bags. If you're dealing with confirmed cases, you have to soak them first before you use detergents. And then, you have to disinfect your washing machines after every use. If you're outsourcing your laundry, you have to make sure that those, the third party who's getting them have provisions in place that they are practicing to pong proper cleaning and disinfection guidelines. If you have paper records, this is not really recommended. I mean, this is not mandatory. If you have the UV or disinfectant machines for your paper records, that's fine. But you don't have to buy. Just in case you need to handle paper, option po dito is just make sure that you have uh, alcohol ready nearby for your assistants or for yourself or you have a hand washing facility nearby so you can immediately wash your hands after you handle paper-based records po. same with electronic devices you have to clean them using the mild solution or alcohol ito po yung sabi ko kanina uh, again i'll give you the copy of the issue once optimal use of ppes uh, this is really for hospital ito po tayo triage ito po with mounted physical barrier uh, any form will do hindi naman po kailangan yung mahal i've seen clinics with improvised barriers so if there is a barrier then you or your employees can do with just wearing the three ply surgical mask but if you don't have the barrier when you deal with patients then you have to wear the face shield or gloves aside from the mask pole. Again, if you have someone assigned to do the cleaning and disinfection of your material, soil linen, they have to wear PPE because hindi, ngayon po kasi, di ba, hindi na natin talaga alam kung sino sa mga nakakaharap natin. Baka meron po dyan mga carriers or asymptomatic positive. Yan po, or especially those yung pong talagang nagtitingin ng mga confirmed positive cases, kailangan po may suot po sila na proper equipment. Then this is an algorithm for return to work para po dun sa mga hindi pa nagbubukas. Nakita na lang po dito, if you have employees, then there is an algorithm screening tool po that if they are a previous case or they have exposure, it's recommended that they get a certificate of 14-day quarantine. If not, and there's no exposure in the area, by all means, they can go back to work. If they, if they are part of the vulnerable workforce, then you can consider providing them yung alternative schedule if it's not possible or controlled naman po ang kanilang condition and they don't have symptoms, they are cleared to work. But definitely those who are symptomatic will have to be isolated or referred to a treatment facility. Yan. I think I will pause here po um, because the next is clarification of RT-PCR and RDT. I will entertain questions first regarding the first part of the lecture. That's fine. Uh, thank you, Doctora. What we'll do is uh, uh, the participants can actually type your questions mm -hmm. uh, in the chat and yes. Doctora Christy can go through them one by one para hindi magulo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes po. Then just in case na there would be clarifications needed, uh, Doctora Christy can call on the particular participant mm -hmm. to unmute. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So you recommend that I go on po? Wala po ako nakikita dito sa group chat. There are no questions. Uh, kung if there are, uh, let's give them a minute to type okay. or two. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in between, yeah. in between, let's uh, welcome our PAI president, uh, Dr. Tan Cho Chong. Uh, Ayo, thank you Dr. very Tan. much for this opportunity. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, Dr. Al Lagaya, mm -hmm. welcome po. They're also also quiet. They're also quiet. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good sign or a bad sign. I think it's a good sign. Your, your presentation a while ago is very clear yes. and to the point. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Okay. Yeah. So, ito po, I'll go to RT-PCR. And RDP. Oh, 
Ang oh, ito. I think Regarding vulnerable workforce, pregnant, is it really better if they do not have to go physically or just stay home? Um, actually, if sa pregnant po, if they are not high risk, meaning it's a healthy pregnancy, if you need them in their workplaces, then they can report to work. But if it is a case of a high-risk pregnancy, definitely they should just stay at home. Yung pong mga um, regular or normal pregnancies, it will depend on the need at the workplace. I will give that to you as a better... Kapag you will know more because you know them, you're the ones who see them. It's recommended that they don't go. But if the work that they're going to do is essential, then with the proper precautions, pwede naman po silang pumunta sa workplace. Especially if you have everything there. Like, nandyan po yung physical distancing, nandyan po yung availability of hand washing facilities, yung pong mga ating mga sanitizers, then definitely um, it minimizes the risk po. Copy of the slides. Ang sinasabi ko po, ma'am, pasensya na po, the slides, I cannot because I just grab the, I make them myself, I just grab the images from Google, so there might be some implications there, but I got everything from the issuances. I will give the copy of the issuances kasi nandun po yung mga detalye. There are some things there that I might have failed to mention. Yun. Ibibigay ko po yun sa inyong lahat. Nandun po yung tables, nandun po yung details. Yes. Sige po. Is it okay? Yeah. I'll continue po. Okay. Okay, Doc. Sige po. Thank Risk you. Care. Yes. So, clarification on RDT and PCR. Kasi ito po yung isa sa akin din favorite na binibigay ngayon na lecture because of the prevalence of in use nga po ng RDTs. Again, Lagi niyo po narinig sa TV, number of cases being tested by RT-PCR. It's reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction test. What it does is it tests if the virus is there. So when you use PCR, it means that the virus is present in the person. That is why the person tests positive for COVID-19. However, it does not distinguish between the infectious virus and remnant material. Because it tests for the presence of the virus. That's why this is the gold standard for diagnosis. Kasi po, even if you are not showing symptoms, but you have the virus in your body, definitely you will test positive. One thing to consider is it needs specialized equipment to do this and it has to be conducted in a specialized facility. RDTs for rapid antibody diagnostic tests. What it tests for is the presence of antibodies. Antibodies are formed as a response to the presence of foreign materials. Now, ito po, normal physiology, you have to be exposed to the bacteria, virus, or toxin first before you develop the antibodies. That's why it takes some time before you form this response. And that's why din po the RDT detects the presence when you are around the seventh day of illness. Kaya po, this is not the gold standard for screening because Kung yung pong tao or pasyente nasa unang pitong araw ng pagkakasakit, hindi po siya makikita sa RDT. Ayan po. I uh, made a simplified table. Kapag po RT-PCR, code standard for screening, what it tells us, you are positive because the virus is in your body. Yun po, even if you don't have symptoms, if you have the virus, kaya pang nag-positive po kayo sa RT-PCR, Ibig sabihin po nun, positive po talaga sa, sa COVID-19. However, hindi po niya masasabi kung yung virus ay hindi na active o kaya kung kayo po ay gumaling na. Di ba kanina po sabi ko, it does not distinguish between infective virus and the remnant. Kaya po minsan yung iba, pinapa-RDT na po kasi kahit po magaling na sila, magpa-positive pa rin sila sa PCR. Pero yung antibodies naman po, yung proweba na magaling na sila at hindi na sila nakakahawa, yan po. 
use po niya, it's the gold standard for diagnosis. And kahit po asymptomatic, masasabi po niya na may COVID-19. RDD po, hindi naman po namin sinasabi na hindi siya maganda. Lagi ko yung kinaklaro. Sinasabi ko, may maganda po ang RDT, may gamit po ang RDT. Kaya lang po, ang gamit po niya ay hindi para mag-screen kung kayo ay mayroong COVID-19. Ang nakikita kasi niya ay kung ikaw ay meron pa rin virus pero hindi na ito nakakahawa dahil pagaling ka na o kaya ikaw ay gumaling na sa pagkakasakit. Again, it does not tell if you are on the first seven day of illness. So ngayon, if you have the virus but you don't have symptoms, hindi niya makukuha. Maaaring negative yung result niya. Tsaka kapag meron kang virus, kahit may ipon ka, ilalagnat ka, may symptoms ka, pero nandun ka pa lang sa unang stage okay. ng sakit ng COVID-19, wala ka pang antibodies, pwede ka pa rin mag-negative. That is why it is not recommended to be used as standalone test. Kung sakali man po gagamit kayo ng RDT, kailangan po FDA certified and RIT invalidated. Kailangan din po yung RDT nyo, yung pong may nakalagay na IgG, IgM. Kasi meron pong iba positive, negative lang. And then, it is important kung yung tao po ay pwede nang i-discharge dahil siya po ay pagaling na, gumagaling na. Ito po, is, is, saglit lang po, pinapakita lang po dito is yung symptoms po. Onset, kailan kayo nagkakaroon ng fever, sore throat, cough. So, may kita niyo po, itong dotted line, ito po yung ating antibodies. At ito pong si RDT, nakukuha lang niya dito sa panahon na to. So kapag nadun ka pa lang sa first week ng pagkakasakit, hindi niya makukuha. Hindi siya magsasabi na positive. Kaya ang mas maganda na ginagamit at recommended po ng DOH is RT-PCR. Yan po, there's really no perfect test but RT-PCR is better than RDTs. And then, priority po natin, regardless of test, is still yung pong ating minimum public health standards. Kasi nga po, the disease being viral in nature, doon pa rin po yung emphasis natin sa prevention. Ito po yung table for RDT. Sino po yung sinasabi ko na you have to get the ones with IgM and IgG kasi may table po. Kasama po ito sa issue once na ibibigay ko po sa inyo na kopya. So meron po dito na kahit po positive siya sa IgM pero kung yung IgG ay positive din, pwede pa rin po siyang pumasok. Kasi ibig po sabihin nito, hindi na siya nakakahawa at gumaling na siya. Kaya pwede na siyang pumasok. Yan po. Or kung nandun man siya sa facility, pwede na po siyang i-discharge. Pero kung sakasakali po na positive ang IgM negative ang IgG, kailangan po i-isolate na po siya talaga. Kaya sinasabi ko nga po, important na meron kayong coordination with either local facility or private facility na malapit. Kasi kung makakuha po kayo ng pasyente na ganito po yung resulta kung gagawa kayo na RDT, um, as of now po kasi medical doctors lang po ang allowed gumawa ng test at mag-interpret, kailangan ma-refer niyo po sila agad. And you have to have an isolation area sa clinic po ninyo kasi dapat hindi po sila makikihalubilo doon sa mga walang COVID-19. Yung po pala isang emphasize ko, sa clinics po ninyo, kailangan niyo mag-prepare ng area for isolation. Just in case lang po, kunyari, meron kayong assistant, employee, tapos pagpasok niya, may sinat na siya, doon na po siya ilagay. Huwag na po siya makihalubilo pa sa ibang tao doon sa facility ninyo. And then, i-refer niyo na po siya. Pwede naman pong home management muna, mag-self-isolate po siya. Pero definitely po, dapat huwag na po siya makihalo doon po sa iba na walang mga symptoms. Ayan po, isa ko po, main message is, 
Parehas po na test, may gamit po sila sa COVID-19. We just have to use the right test for the right setting. Kaya nga po, if we're talking about screening, ito po ang ating PCR. But when we talk about monitoring patients, dito naman ito po pumapasok ang ating RDT. Ito po yung references. I will give the copies of this to PAI po. Yun lang po. Thank you, Doctora. Uh, Doctora, there's a may pahabol na question kanina. Uh, would you like to have a look? Yes. It's asking uh, about alcohol. Wait lang po. Copy, yes. Thank you for answering. If say alcohol is not available the moment, can I use handheld UV light instead? Um, pwede naman po. Actually, even with the other disinfectants, if you have other available na approved naman po, at least FDA certified, then you just follow the manufacturer's instructions on how it should be used. Importante po yun kasi may ibang mga um, modalities, I mean mga gamit po or disinfectants na kailangan, kunyari nakababal for 5 minutes, 10 minutes, kailangan po i-observe yun. Kasi kung hindi niyo po susundin yung instructions noon, is baka hindi po niya ma-disinfect pa din yung pong bacteria or virus. An option din po if alcohol is not available is yung pong ating 1 is to 100. Napakita po kanina na mas uh, milder form of disinfectant. Yung pong UV light, they recommend this for uh, paper-based po na records. Using on actual uh, personnel or ano, wala pa po ako nakikita na published guidelines. But if it's if the manufacturer's manual says that it is uh, safe to be used for other appliances or other non-critical items, then go ahead po. Then so, next question po. So for RT-PCR, it will only be positive after a week of exposure. They can test positive. Bale, actually po, yung RT-PCR is positive week of exposure. As long as you have the virus po, then it will test positive. Mm -hmm. Yun po, yes. And then, pay day one, yes po. Hmm. On day one of the illness, definitely magpa-positive na po yan. Even if they don't have symptoms, as long as you are harboring the virus, then it will um, test. The results will come out as positive. And then for alcohol, what's recommended po based on the issuances is 70%. Po. Thank you, Doctora. Uh, yes, are there any more questions that would uh, anybody wants to ask? Yeah. So you know, boy, I just uh, want to make an appeal to our practitioners. Now we really have to exert effort to implement these standards because we really don't know a lot yet regarding this virus. And as of now, ito pong non-pharmaceutical interventions, this is our best uh, defense against contracting the virus po. And then, of course, sinasabi ko nga, as integrative medicine practitioners, we have an edge. Dahil doon po sa part on pro increasing resilience, Ako po sa personal experience ko, marami po tayong marirecommend na modalities or techniques for our patients kasi nga po uh, aside from the uh, physical symptoms, yung pong sa mental and with yung issue of anxiety, talaga pong anxious sila and it helped that you know, may mga alam nga po ako na techniques like acupressure, saka po yung sa ating mga meditation, even pranic breathing, lahat po yun nakatulong sa kanila. And I'm sure that a lot of our practitioners here also practice the same and can recommend the same to our patients po. Yes, yun nga po sa clinics ninyo, um, I'd like to emphasize yung pong coordination so that at least when you um, see or screen out patients who are symptomatic or those who are positive, then important po kasi yung ma-isolate sila agad and ma-refer po sila agad.
Uh, Doctora, there's a follow-up question. Yes, po. I'm trying to and trying to enable the chat. Yes, chat. Doctor, any incidence of false positive sa RT PCR? As of now, po, um, wala pa po ako nakikita na actual published uh, studies. There has been a uh, re few reports po. I think sa international, mm -hmm. pero don po sa atin is at least kami po sa region namin, wala pa naman po kami na kukuha. But there is a possibility for that. Kasi hindi naman po 100%. Remember doon po sa isang pinakita ko na slide na we don't really have a test that's 100% effective. But performance-wise, sa specificity po niya and sensitivity, it's a lot better po compared to the RDT. Uh, any follow-up questions? Sir Jackson. Ah, Doc Lagaya, good morning. Yes. We were calling on you. Yes, good morning. <laughs> yes, I, uh, well naka, uh, yes. Uh, congratulations, Dr. Rabok. That's a very important sharing. And ang maganda dito, it's not just a theoretical thing that somebody read on a memorandum at nire-re-echo. Yes. Si Dr. Uh, Andaya kasi alam naman natin, tagaan yan sa, uh, sa, sa CHD, sa Region 4B, ibig sabihin mi Maropa, and sa kanya bumabaksak lahat ng mga inquiry that is related to COVID. Kaya very, what, what she's talking about comes from experience, not only sa theory. Kaya we're so lucky to have Dr. Andaya to be sharing those information to us. Thank you, Dr. Abok. Yes, po. Sabihin ko na po, sayang, kasi yung naunahan ako dun sa ano namin, eh, sa space. Dapat dun ako mag-lecture sa... Um, we have a wellness clinic here at the region. Pinamamalaki po namin yan sa Pitak, sa Kasapay, because we're one of the... I think we're the first na Center for Health Development to have an accredited one. Kaso, meron pong ibang nag-lecture dun eh. Naunahan po ako sa booking. <laughs> because now, aside from acupuncture, acupressure, it also doubles as a Western, yung um, mainstream medicine clinic po. So, dalawa po yan niya. Kaya ito rin pong mga health standards na ito, we're also renovating the place and then we're also implementing it here. Kaya po dito sa ating mga practitioners, nakita niyo naman po optimal use of PPEs. Eh, kailangan po talaga nating gumamit kasi um, mahirap na po. You have to be protected. You have to protect yourself. You have to protect your patients. Pero hindi, sabi ko nga po, depende sa setting. Not all of you will have to wear the full one. It depends on the setting and the degree of exposure. Yes po. No other Sir questions. Jackson. Go ahead, Doc. Sir Jackson. Yeah. Go ahead, Doc. Yes. Um, with, with the lecture that we are receiving today, um, it, we at least meron na tayong alas. Um, uh, you have nakakaalis ng kabay. Eh, if you know what will go, what will happen, if ever it it happens. Kaya itong lecture natin will now proceed. I, 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 para sa kampante tayo, hindi tayo mag, magkakaroon ng mental stress na kailangan gabutin pa ng nada na tutusukan sa tega on that concern. But talking about the personal care, nagkaroon na tayo ng lecture for the past regarding the WUFAS. Siguro, um, bago tayo magpa-PCR na sinasabing Dr. Andaya, uh, at alam naman natin wala tayong nararamdaman, pero siguro just to enhance our immunity, nasabi ni Dr. Andaya regarding prevention, enhancing our, our immunity against the virus, siguro po sa first part ng WUFAS recommendation, if you're suspected case, they are recommending it already for us to, uh, to apply, if you want acupuncture, pag hindi na lang, to all your family members, kung meron kayong rape seed, Pag wala pa kayo, bumili na kayo, I think nandiyan yata si Miss Annette na para bibilhan nyo, you put rape seed on those sites and then tell your family members na ito ipipisi rin nyo as regular as you can. So bahala na kayo kung how frequent, 10 times a day or nasa sa inyo na yan, well, give it to all your family members para 
if ever merong virus na lumulutang at nakalampas sa ating mga barrier, nakalampas sa social distancing, nakalampas sa face mask, nakapasok sa loob at kailangan natin palakasin ang katawan natin, then those acupoints that stand by that rape scene that is placed on our body, makakatulong para mapa, lalo mapadagdag yung panatag ng loob natin. That's all, uh, ma, uh, Ms. Dr. Abok and Sir Jackson okay. and Dr. Dagdag Dag -dag ko lang po, Dr. Don, yung experience namin because I have already trained a few um, health practitioners po in three provinces. Nangyari nga lang po itong lockdown kaya hindi namin na kompleto lahat siya no, for the region. But ito nga po, nung nag-start na to, Uh, nalito nga ho sila kung anong gagawin, ninenervous sila. Tapos sabi ko nga, nakalimutan nyo na ba? Di ba nag-training na tayo ng acupressure? So yung mga pipisilin nyo para tumas yung immunity nyo to help deal with stress and anxiety. And malaking bagay daw po yung report ng ating mga na-train na practitioners doon. Since ang sabi nga nila, it helped a lot alleviate yung kanilang anxiety, stress, at saka nga po, ito as part of non-pharmaceutical pharmacological interventions to boost immunity. Dahil hindi nga po lahat, especially nakaubusan po ng mga vitamins, sabi ko nga, at least meron kayong magagawa na yan, magpipisil-pisil kayo kung sakasakali nga na naubusan na tayo nung ating mga mainstream medicine interventions. Po. Sir, Sir Jackson? Uh, uh, we'll, we'll just, oh, go ahead, Doc. Yes, uh, update ko na rin kayo sa research which all of us know regarding the PAI. In consultation with our president, Dr. Tan Cho Chong, uh, nagkakaroon kami ng problema. And one of the problems we're having is the letter that Dr. Tan Cho Chong gave to the Department of Health hindi pa sumasagot hanggang ngayon. Kinafollow up naman ni Leti at sabi daw sa kanya na, na, na download na raw nila yung letter uh, by Monday pa at tapos doon by Wednesday, doon pa lang daw sa isa, sasagutin tayo. Mukhang namimiligro na baka mag-delay. If ever, mag, if ever magkabulya, mas, masirang ating plano, the main reason is baka the, the DOH personnel recommending the venue are so busy to entertain us. Pero please pray na sana matuloy. Pero if ever na hindi matuloy, Dr. Tan Cho Chong and I already planning out with our plan B, if ever mayroon plan B. Now, Dr. Abok is part of the team. Ms. Anna is also part of the team. Dr. Uh, Dr. John Villamayor is also part of the team. And then all the PAI are part of the team. It would be very welcome for you to put in a lot your wisdom. Parang sinabi ni Sir Jackson, uh, although the WUFAS recommended points, depende pa rin yan on how we as an acupuncturist are going to evaluate diagnose a patient para makadagdag sa efficacy ng ating acupuncture. So until now, please all of us be safe, protect ourselves with a lot of our these things and do uh, preventive acupressure now for us and our family, family members. That's all po. Thank you very much, Doc Al. Uh... Are there any other questions coming up? Mukhang tahimik today. Oo nga po eh. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that only means that, nila. <laughs> that, that only means very clear po yung uh, naging presentation po ngayon, Doc. Thank you very much. Uh, if, if there are no more questions, then maybe we can close a bit earlier. Yeah. Uh, any, anything you would want to follow up, Dr. Andaya? So, uh, yun nga lang po na I want to emphasize that uh, we're lucky because sabi ko nga po yun, as integrative medicine practitioners, you have something more to offer. We have something of value to add to mainstream medicine practice when it comes to prevention of um, COVID-19. And then yun nga po, since we have tests in place, but they're not 100%, it will always fall down to the implementation of the minimum public health standards because the disease is viral in nature. Doon lagi tayo bumabagsak sa non-pharmacological interventions and yun pong ating yun nga po, prevention, um, keeping yung pong distance and then hand washing, yun pa rin po talaga ang ating best defense. And yun nga po, with integrative medicine practice, yung pong ating mga acupressure, other techniques to boost immunity and promote health. Yun lang po. Thank you very Thank much, you very much po, Pai, for the opportunity to give this lecture. <laughs>